uh, as Secretary Mattis uh, has said many times, our uh, goal in Yemen uh, is an end to the conflict um, through a United Nations brokered settlement. The conflict in Yemen affects regional security across the Middle East uh, and threatens U.S. national security interests, including the free flow of commerce in the Red Sea. Just this month, uh, the Houthis attacked a Saudi oil tanker in the Red Sea, threatening commercial shipping and freedom of navigation in the world's fourth busiest maritime choke point, the Bab al-Mandeb. This conflict has unleashed a humanitarian toll on Yemeni civilians, as my colleagues from the State Department and USAID have already mentioned. This is why Secretary Mattis believes strongly uh, that the efforts of the new UN Special Envoy, Martin Griffiths, to bring all sides of the conflict to the negotiating table are so important. Indeed, we need a stable, inclusive government in Yemen to provide security to the Yemeni people and to reduce and ultimately eliminate terrorist safe havens that are being used by Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, AQAP, and ISIS in Yemen. A political solution to the Yemen conflict will also reduce the chaos that Iran has exploited to advance its malign agenda. With help from Iran, the Houthis have launched more than 100 ballistic missiles and countless rockets into Saudi Arabia, directed at major population centers, international airports, military installations, and oil infrastructure. Uh, in the last month alone, um, the Houthis have launched more than 13 ballistic missiles and long-range rockets uh, into Saudi Arabia. Mr. Chairman, uh, I would invite you and all of the members of the committee uh, to visit the Iranian material display uh, at Joint Base Anacostia Bowling to see firsthand uh, the Iranian-manufactured ballistic missile that was launched at Riyadh International Airport in November 2017, as well as other evidence of Iran's support to the Houthis and its efforts to destabilize the region. Yemen has become a test bed for Iran's uh, malign activities. Mr. Chairman, the Defense Department is currently engaged in two lines of effort in Yemen. Our first line of effort and our priority is the fight against al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula and ISIS in Yemen two terrorist organizations that directly threaten the United States, our allies, and our partners. To combat AQIP, AQAP, and ISIS, U.S. forces, in coordination with the UN-recognized government of Yemen, are supporting our regional counterterrorism partners in ongoing operations to disrupt and dis degrade their ability to coordinate, plot, and recruit for external terrorist operations. Additionally, U.S. military forces are conducting airstrikes against AQAP and ISIS in Yemen, pursuant to the 2001 uh, authorization for the use of military force to disrupt and destroy terrorist network networks. Our second line of effort is the provision of limited non-combat support to the Saudi-led coalition in support of the UN-recognized government of Yemen. This support began in 2015 under President Obama, and in 2017, President Trump reaffirmed America's commitment to our partners in these efforts. Fewer than 50 U.S. military personnel work in Saudi Arabia with the Saudi-led coalition, advising and assisting with the defense of Saudi territory, sharing intelligence, and providing logistical support, including aerial refueling. The objective of this support is to build our partners' capacity and enable them to defend themselves and maintain their own security. As I noted before, Houthi missile attacks pose a very real threat to Saudi Arabia and the UAE and to freedom of navigation in the Red Sea. The Houthi rebellion, facilitated by Iran, also continues to pose a threat to the Yemeni people. In addition to exacerbating the civil conflict, the Houthis use child soldiers, disrupt and commandeer the distribution of humanitarian aid and commercial goods, and exploit the deliveries of aid for their own financial purposes. With regard to non-combatant casualties, U.S. military support to our partners is always geared towards mitigating non-combatant casualties. U.S. advisors provide best practices on avoiding collateral damage, and U.S. aerial refueling allows coalition aircraft to spend more time in the air, giving our partners time to validate targets, practice tactical patience, um, and reduce the risk of non-combatant casualties. We also continue to urge the coalition to allow full access to humanitarian and commercial goods and are encouraged by recent steps of our that our partners have taken to provide more than $1 billion in humanitarian relief.